I think of my paintings as treading boundaries, the boundary between the landscape genre and still life genres, I suppose. What I want for them is that they capture a sense of time and place as I've seen it, and then that they pass that experience on to others. I'm Morgan Allender, and I'm an artist gardener. I left school at age 17, fresh out of a girls' college. I applied for a whole lot of different things. One of those things was the art school in Adelaide, and I took in a portfolio and thought that would be a wonderful thing to do. And surprisingly, I ended up getting a scholarship to go there for first year, and so that's what I went and did. And after the first year, or probably during that year, I just completely fell in love with it and just knew that that's what I wanted to do, and painting in particular. Shortly after graduating, I managed to get an exhibition with a gallery in Melbourne. And at that time, my partner, Justin, he got a phone call from friends in Melbourne. Hey, mate, come to Melbourne. We're starting a band. He's a bass player. And we kind of looked at each other and went, OK, why not? After, I think it was about three years in Melbourne, me just really, really wanted a place where I could have a garden. And ultimately, that became the pool that brought us back. After we moved back to Adelaide, after about a year, we found this farm. And we came out here one night, as you do when you're looking at a place that you're gonna buy. It was at that magical time of day, and there was this really romantic wildness to the whole place, and I just thought, that's it. It's just the perfect backdrop to my future garden. Initially, I didn't have this studio. I was working from a bedroom in the house, but looking out onto the landscape still through the windows in a similar way to I am now. And I think that almost subconsciously, the light and the colours of the landscape around here started creeping back into the work. And I don't actually think that it was a deliberate or conscious thing. It was just more like an opening up of the palette that occurred, just because that's what I was looking at every day. I do a little bit of sketching, but mainly I spend time out in the garden or looking out at it through the windows, but usually walking around in it. And then I take that experience or the recollection of that experience, I bring it back here into the studio and then I make the paintings from that. So they end up being paintings that are about a recollection of an experience or a memory, I suppose. You've got, you know, the breeze coming through the trees and the foliage, and then the light obviously changes throughout the day and throughout the season. Mum was always um, really interested in art and gardening and she would take me to a lot of gardens as well. As a child, we would go and look at open gardens and she would take me around her garden that she was making. And so when I was growing up, I learnt the names of plants and things as I was learning to talk, I suppose. But now when I reflect back on it, I, I kind of think how lucky I am because it's kind of shaped who I am today and, and what my passions are. I'm a gardener who paints, and for a long time I kept those things very separate in my life. I, you know, I had painting and the studio and that was work, and then I had my garden and that was really my hobby and my downtime. And over the past few years, or perhaps as I've got older, I've started to realise that they aren't really separate at all and they're both parts of the same thing. As the seasons change here, and the seasons are quite pronounced in the Adelaide Hills, we have very cold, wet, bleak at times, winters and hot, baking, extreme summers. And that is reflected in the garden, obviously. These paintings behind me, which are full of kind of warm browns and warm reds and pinks and flowers, of course. I was painting in the middle of winter when there's no flowers outside and lots of mud and kind of grey light and I started painting these richer colours and I think I just paint what I'm craving, I paint what I want to see. 
So now that the garden's reached a certain level of maturity, it's now about 10 years old. What's interesting is that it's changed from a very flower-filled garden into what is now a shade garden in a lot of the main areas. And that's interesting for us to observe because it's what's starting to happen is it's creating its own microclimate. As the hedges come up and the trees come up, the temperature is dropping, the tree canopies are joining up, and the planting underneath is also behaving differently. But the biggest thing we notice is the, the lushness that's retained and the protection from a lot of the hot weather in summer. I think my main inspiration for the garden has actually all along been about trying to recapture the magical atmosphere of that first evening when we came out here. And I wanted to create a romantic, lush garden full of flowers with a romantic atmosphere. So it's been trial and error, and I think that's what gardening is. I think it's this wonderful, creative, forgiving exercise where you learn a lot along the way. My favourite time of day in the garden is definitely the end of the day. That time just after sunset as you go into the gloaming, I love that word, where the sun has set but you've still got that beautiful luminescent light and colours do really amazing weird things in that light and it's really beautiful and I spend a lot of time out in the garden at that time because I've usually finished work for the day and I'll wander around out there until Justin comes looking for me. Thank you.